to the uh, visitor center at the Topeka State Capitol. Uh, you know, we got a letter several months ago about the counties participating in funding this, the tile, which is an outline of the, of the counties. And uh, Ruth Teitman and the 4-H Council has taken that project on, and we now have $1,000 to forward on to KAC for our share of the state. Thank you. I'm very glad of it. And worthy cause. How much are we? How much was that? Thousand. Oh, it was a thousand. Yeah. And you know what they did? They, they suggested, you know, not use taxpayers right. and yeah. use 4-H clubs and uh, stuff. Boy Scouts and all that. We have a fundraiser. So. Morning. Ruth made it a lot easier for the 4-H clubs. So. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, guys. You're up. Okay, we're up. We thought All right. first. We're just trying to sneak in. <laughs> oh, around here. No, um, we had visited with um, our auditor Monday. I got a hold of him. He was out of town last week, and uh, he recommended that that we uh, certainly not. Pursue his own fund warrant situation yet. He's going to do an end of the year cost report. It's going to take a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, and that gives us a better idea. There's several services like that around too. I mean, <clears throat> if you need to explore those avenues, I mean, yeah. there's one in Ellen that contacts me all the time. So. Really? I, I think <clears throat> we, excuse me, um, I think we need a line of credit of, of some sort um, going forward. Um, even when things, even when things are good and make that cash flow is plenty, the um, <clears throat> it doesn't take much of a bump and road for us to get a gym. And it, as I look back through old records, I think it's been that way for a long time. And I just think that's kind of the nature of the beast. Um, and they've been talking about the ICD-10 as, as we get into that. Uh, the government's saying no matter how much you're, you think 
if you're ready for ICD-10. ICD-10 being prepared for delays on our end, meaning they're not quite ready. You know, I mean, it's just it's something we're going to have to be careful about going forward. Um, you mentioned something the other day, Shane, about um, a questionnaire that Joe was talking about. I, I'm not sure I understand that exactly. Well, I mean, if we got forced to the point where we find like PMS, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, we had talked about sending kind of a straw poll out mm -hmm. to the community, countywide, okay. to see their feelings on several issues, not just the, another no fund work for the hospital. Okay. Um, I mean, we've had a discussion about that soon. You know. But it's not just something he wants to do randomly. No, that's no, 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 no. We were. Mm -hmm. I was wanting to do it <coughs> as mm -hmm. just to, to fill the community out for mm -hmm. the support that they have for another enough one more or other county issues that we're faced with. That's that's I what that I wasn't was. sure. Yeah, that's what that was. Long. I have to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's what we were. Just to get an idea of what But it wasn't just a hospital. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, we, we it's had just discussed kind of a straw poll putting the airport discussion on there as well as far as what we were saying. Oh county road unit system. Yeah. 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 But no, it wasn't just the <coughs> Um, well, I do appreciate you and the board being proactive on this, rather than, you know, keep waiting and the hole gets deeper like we well, experienced, yes. what, three years ago. Yeah. And, uh, well, we, um, this has been two weeks ago. Um, I, I had promised you and, and the other two commissioners before you guys got on that, you know, we would never when we get to that point, mm -hmm. and so that's what we we're trying to do. And I do think that um, we have some good conversations you know, each other can over to the hospital, and, and maybe we can do that some more. Um, and, you know, if you guys come into the meetings, uh, that would be helpful as well. I think communication is pretty important. I received this Monday. It's KHA doesn't. State every two or three years, and it's just the impact on the economy of Stafford County. And uh, I know you guys don't have anything to read, so <coughs> I think about halfway through this, that's a pretty interesting thing. <coughs> do, you, do you guys have anything? No, I just was I started at the back and was reading forward on the way over, but <laughs> there is a <coughs> little deal back there. It's, they don't term uh, the economic multiplier. I think that's mm -hmm. something like that. You know, so many dollars spent here amounts to so many dollars spent in the county, and it's uh, it has a hospital line uh, item out separately. So now that was also, if you'll notice, it probably it says the hospital had 65 employees. This was done in, in 11, so right. things have changed. But you know, you still got people driving around the county that are employed here, and blah blah blah. So. My concern is that um, that I think through the hospital, uh, anything that you guys touch as far as your responsibility in the hospital, uh, working with economic development for Stafford County, I think we all need to work together to make sure that this is a viable county, not not somebody that, that we're fighting against each other, trying to say, well, we don't want you, we don't want you, know, because that's going to hurt all of us. And I know Carolyn Dunn is working very hard at uh, bringing economic development into this into this county. And uh, one, of the, one of those parts of that economic development, I think, is is the hospital, is the school, uh, it is it is the schools and it, it didn't work out right. It is, it is the schools and and uh, but so I think it's it's a collaboration that we all need to work together to make this a, a successful county. 
and to attract people to this county. And uh, so I, I guess that's my one concern is that, that, um, uh, that we are a cohesive group working together. I visited with Carolyn. Yeah. Well, I, I saw that she was here at the last meeting. And, uh, and it wasn't for that, though. Uh, I just went and visited yeah. with her. Yeah. The better communication I got, the better it will be. Yeah, I think that's very well put. I think that that's, communication is extremely important. But but, uh, uh, and, but in that, working together is, is what we need to be successful. I mean, I went through it with the idea of what can you do to help you. I mean, mm -hmm. like that. BKD and if, if she knows everything, I mean, Carolyn, um, she and I visit quite often. She seems like she's always coming up with something, you know, grand or something, and she'll call and see if there's something that we need or will work for us. And I just feel like she's always out there trying to help us out, too. So, and then when we uh, asked for what kind of two years ago, she was very helpful in all the information. I guess that's all we have. Well, I think one of the things we need to work on and, and, and we need to be very cognizant of is a positive attitude, attitude towards uh, this county and, and what this county can offer. Yeah. And, and that's, there's a lot of negativism and, and we need to work at having a positive, putting a positive uh, face on that county. This is pretty thick, but you might want to put a few of these out in the county. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's kind of what we want to do. I would do that. Is it generally electronically? Yeah. We could put it on our website. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be nice for us to get an update. I mean, one, I know this one comes out every three years, but if, if, if we don't have as many people as we employ, this or is on that report. Well, I was surprised that. I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. So you may not want to. You may not want to put that out. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could put a disclaimer right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it does say it was done in 11. <laughs> this, this page is intentionally left blank. <laughs> it's whatever you think. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. Well, they do. Okay. Well, because so we can always. I thought it was the way. Because every three years, we're going to be the next time they do it. Because Kurt had said they're quite a ways behind. I think they had just done one at the time we had the county meetings, information meetings for the no fund warrant. So we had that version at that time. It so it's updated next year. I think our link on the website wasn't working one day when someone got on it. Your link? Yeah, I'll have to double check. But. We need to do something with our website. So financially, you, you've collected money to make link it to the distribution then? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> We cut, we collected the fountain. We had 14,000 last week, and we still have some kind of Maybe it's going to be tight. We'll see how it Well, because, I mean, in the time frame, like Joe was talking on another, on a, on a new fund one, would be. 60 to 90 days. Is, is there, I know, I know the 60 to 90 day thing, but there's not a certain time in the fiscal year that, you, that, that would keep you from doing that, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. somebody was trying to tell me this and that. Mm -hmm. okay. But, Ruth, you're right. You know, if we don't toot our own horn, or beat our own drum and, you know, put out these positive spins on the county, no one else is going to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're in this day of uh, social media, and I think it's very important that we keep the website up and going. And When Carolyn and I were talking this uh, last week, we were talking about some of the things that, and she's kind of the same way I am, I, I don't like putting stuff out in the public until you're pretty sure it's going to happen, you know, you don't want to say, well, we're going to get this piece of equipment or this particular doctor is going to come and have a clinic until we know it's going to happen. So, and 
sheet kind of tells the same way with the county. So we were thinking, you know, we probably should we need to get past that and, and figure out a way to get some of those things out there so people know what we're doing. I mean, you don't want to overstep your bounds, but um, there's a lot of stuff that we talk about, you know, with the board that, that you just can't put in the public yet because it involves you know, more than talking about it. And we need to figure out a way to get ourselves out there more without, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a fine line. Well, I just, you know, I, I felt that the public awareness when the no fun work was going on the first time was very good. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I feel now that we've slipped mm -hmm. because I don't, I mean, you can see that even from the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, even the census numbers that we, that we look at. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not saying that's the sole purpose right, of right. why the numbers have failed, but, but I think it contributes to that. Mm -hmm. Because you don't see that stuff out in the public where, where I go, you know, I, you know and before I before I did see it. And so, you know, I don't, and I don't know what the key key to that is. You know, like you said, you can't flood it, but right. but yet people I, need to be aware of what services you do offer. To you, I think so. part of the problem, you know, I've been working there for over ten years, and I've heard that discussion the whole time I've been there. Of how do we get people to know exactly what we do? And I think, and, yeah, what you can do, I think part of the problem is, is folks simply don't think about us until you're sick. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of a, a very, you know, um, so we've got to figure out an avenue. Mm -hmm. Don't remember your, your hospital meeting or part of the open. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why you couldn't put some of that information out there. It's, yeah. Public information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can understand you not wanting to put all of it out there, but right. if, if you're working on something or you got something coming in, put it in your minutes. And people read that. Probably. I think they do. <laughs> I don't want to go backwards in what I said. I am going to say something else. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the other thing I'm concerned about is that people don't understand how hard it is for a hospital to to function in, in, in today's society because of what's happening in the political world. And and that's the other side of it. And people need to understand that a lot of our problems are caused not by anything that we're doing, but because of what the government's doing. That's for sure. I don't think it hurts them to know that. Yeah. Well, well, I think they're 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 reimbursing. Yeah, exactly. reimbursing. <laughs> you look at the percentage of payers are insurance companies and it's very obvious we're totally involved with the government. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well our Medicaid I mean trying to get our Medicaid payment in a timely manner is one of our problems. And and uh, so you know it's it's one of those things that we have to deal with that, that people don't really the average person on the street are, isn't going to think about. It. And so I mean so there's two sides that I think need to be addressed, in my opinion. Anything else? Oh, I throw my mountain up. A lot of, on the other hand, with what you said, Ruth, a lot of the information you get from the media, though, it kind of makes it sound like it's stacked against hospitals, period. Yeah. I don't know how much you want to advertise that either. But. Well, I know, but but it's just I think some of there are some things out there that that need to be corrected. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a tough decision. It's yeah, so it, it's it's yeah. tough. It really is. Yeah. Because how you do because that. some, and I don't mean this demeaning to anybody, but a lot of people don't dig into anything to figure it out, mm -hmm. and uh, and they just take the gossip at the coffee shops and as actual. Awesome. And, and factual, and, and uh, that's that's one of our big problems. But that's a big problem with anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a big problem with any industry. Well, there's a lot of things coming down the pipe now. You just don't know how it's going to affect you. <laughs> Could I ask if if there is a uh, <clears throat> survey or poll, whatever, sent out? Could we look at the wording before, yeah. as far as the hospitals concerned, before that? I mean. 
Yeah, I think it'd be a joint effort. Okay. You know, because the, there's other. other questions you want to put on? Yeah, I'm saying you might have questions. You there's hospital, there's airport, I mean, it, there's. I thought it would be a good idea to just communicate with the public and get right. Them. I understand and that because because on 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 heated issues you have one side or the other show up to voice their opinion. You don't have both typically, and and sometimes those the, the pluses and the minuses. We need both sides or right. all, or right. all the information. You know, to try to make a, the best decision for what we're likely to do, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't nothing to try to run behind anybody's back to try to do. I mean, it was just for us to seek information on people's ideas and, and uh, feelings, I guess. Questions? There's always a vocal minority that you hear and you'd rather have the opinion of all of them. Yeah, the right. But yeah, you're more than welcome to even add questions or look at it or... Mm -hmm. I don't know what time frame you're looking at. I, I don't. I, what, I just, we were just brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need to do it now, do we? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
same, like I said, the same coverage. If it come in and duplicate that, we would be happy to do that. So that being the first option is comparing apples to apples. We could save, um, of course, with yours, the total monthly fixed costs that you're currently paying are highlighted in yellow is $10,105.22, and ours would be $10,178.96. So not knowing for sure percentage of your renewal, but we would be pretty close in there um, on your total fixed cost. Um, definitely manage your dollars. So that is the self-funded quote. Um, we have uh, GFL statements uh, with United Healthcare, and actually the rates came back less than what the original illustrated quote was. And I know we had talked about the network, which I did bring the network, um, the provider directory here within a hundred mile radius. The response that I got yesterday from the Provider Relations Department was, of course, the Pratt uh, Hospital became a network provider as of November 1st. Any positions associated with the hospital, we're bringing them on now. So um, the, the clinic here is associated with the hospital. So they're being added. Uh, he indicated that the South Central Kansas Bone and Joint, um, they've been a participating provider since 2010. And the Pratt Family Practice, they've got a contract. So I just printed off the email here, the information that they sent. So the United Healthcare directory is being updated on a daily basis. And again, the reason for that is that they are the primary payer for CAMCARE. So uh, you get toward Wichita, it's very strong. I've got groups in Great Bend, United Healthcare, the network there is strong. So I said we were just questioned on a few providers in the Pratt area. Now the rates that I've illustrated um, on the proposal are with a December 30th date. Of course with January 1 and all the changes with healthcare reform and the taxes, the January rates come back about 20% higher. So with looking at, and they won't do a December, um, we could do a December 1, but with it already being the 4th, but they will look at a 1230 effective date, and then that would make your renewal then on a December 1 instead of a January 1, and they would prorate out the month um, on your rates. So I've illustrated the December rates. Um, again, the first page is looking at the plan design for the employee. You know, we currently offer two options. The majority of them are on the $500 deductible. This would be the $500 deductible, then maybe $20 to $2,000 out of pocket. So, and then up to that $5,000. So again, we're reducing the your liability from the $30,000 down to actually $2,500. Um, but once that reaches that $5,000 level, with United Healthcare, then it's covered at 100%. This gives the, um, over the facility visits, it gives the employees a $25 primary care office visit copay, the specialist copay of $50, urgent care facility of $75, and an emergency room copay of $250. Right now, your prescription drugs, um, you do not have a copay. The, it's through OptumRx. Um, all the national chains are in that work. The three pharmacies in Pratt are in that work with OptumRx. For generic drugs, it would be a $15 copay, preferred brand of $40, and a non-preferred of $75. So that's the plan design. And again, the, the blue, the underneath blue part is um, flexible. We can come in and we can change your primary care office visit copays to a $20 if you want to get the blue part here is that's the plan that you write. Um, as for the employee, knowing that your liability with United Healthcare is twenty uh, five thousand. Second page um, are the rates that came back. Um, the illustrated rates at the top under the renewal plan are your maximum cost under your partially self-funded plan now, and I figured these. Totals on 18 single, nine employee and spouse, 
two employee and children and 13 families. Um, on your maximum cost, this includes your fixed cost and your claims reserves is $46,522.56 a month. Under the Part 1 is the United Healthcare rates, and they came back at $271.94 single, $571.07 employee and spouse, $530.28 employee and children, and $829.41 family. Before we had illustrated, um, the illustrated rates was 392 for a single, and the family was actually 1137. So these here are underwritten rates based on the health statements that were done. So that gives you a total monthly based on that count to United Healthcare of 21,877.44. Of course, we figure back in parts two, three, and four. Part two is our administrative fees to process those underlying claims. The claims fund, which down at the bottom under part three, we're setting aside $280 per employee per month into the claims fund to process those claims of that $2,500, which totals $11,760. And then we have our uh, risk management fee to where we charge 10% of savings. So the month you have savings, uh, for every dollar you keep 90 cents, we take 10 cents. If the month you don't have any savings, then we don't get paid. We take that risk with you. So that comes down to an estimated monthly with all those components of $35,681.95. That, based on your maximum cost, it gives you an approximate savings of $10,841 a month or $130,087 a year based on those rates. Now, and remember that 35,681, you're setting aside that 11,716 in your reserves. So, if you go to the second page at the bottom, it kind of breaks that down a little bit more. Your plan savings on your estimate on your total annual is $130,087, but you're adding back in that 11,760 that is actually your money that you're setting aside in reserves which is $141,120 a month. And of course, if you didn't pay one claim, which we know that that won't be the case, it would be $271,207. Based on your employer liability at $2,500 per uh, individual, 108 people, 108.48 people would have to reach that $5,000 deductible for your plan to break even. And if you go back to the top, the count at the top, there's, we have 42 total covered employees and then we just do the, the formulary where, of course, employee and spouse we calculate to employee and children. We do um, three per family and then family. So we're showing just an approximate 94 total insurers. So you're way over total insurers on what we have at one of the family health care. Okay. like they're self-funded. Other than the employee has two cards, they submit it to um, the carrier, submits it, um, the physician submits it to the carrier, which would be United Healthcare in this uh, instance. They process that claim as primary, applying it towards that $5,000 deductible, and then the provider files it to us as secondary to pay according to what was in the blue, the employee's benefit. The, these are the sample packets that we give the employees. We have the employee meetings. We give them a copy on the left-hand side of what their benefits are, go through their deductible, their home insurance. We also provide the how to use card um, on how they need to present um, to the doctor, the hospital, and the pharmacy. We include the 24-7 physician service. We talked about that, the consulted doc and then the mail order form for um, the mail order drugs on it and maintenance. On the right hand side, we provide all of the um, annual notices that's required by the employer to give the employee. Um, you know, they sign off on that, they receive all their annual notices and we take that on file for you. And my business card is in there and on the back side is a sample of our ID cards that the employees receive as secondary.
the I think the biggest thing with all the groups that we have on the Freedom Choice is just remembering the employees remembering to give two cards. You know that when they go and if they get that first explanation of benefit sheet from the primary carrier, then they're saying, no, I've got a five thousand dollar deductible and they didn't pay anything. But it's just a matter, and that's what we stress in the employee meetings is that if you get something you don't understand, pick up the phone, you know, call us, and we can let you know whether we've gotten that claim as secondary. If not, then we call the provider and have them file it to us as a secondary claim. We have, um, you know, other counties, cities, um, just other commercial groups on the Great Insurance Plan. Um, I know um, Mr. Show Walter at Rice County were in our third year with them. That first year, you know, with employees would change. It's always, you know, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of calling and saying this plan didn't get paid, or um, but a lot. It's just a matter of understanding the plan and the two parts. Um, once you get through that first six months, the first year, then like I said, we have Rice County. We're in our third year. City of Abilene, um, Minnesota, as a reference, we've had them two years, getting ready for their third year. Lane County employees, I've had them for uh, probably six years. Um, we've got in the city of Nevada, Shea, in Smith County, three in Smith County the second year on the Freedom Choice Plan. Uh, we're actually changing carriers from there this year, uh, from one carrier to another. Um, but we're, we're very hands on with our employer groups and the employees. Um, again, when they get this packet, my business card's in there. At my cell number, and I'm, like I said, questions don't always come up Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. And we're, we're available. We would be down here on a regular basis to go through reporting. We do the monthly report um, on what total savings you, you know, what you paid in medical claims, what you paid in prescription claims. Attached to the illustration that I have, I also included just a copy of the benefit summary with United Healthcare and how the $5,000 deductible plan works. It's after page four of the illustration. Um, on this, and it just talks about the individual deductible is $5,000, which you as an employer would be responsible for $2,500, the employee the other $2,500. Now, when it talks about your out-of-pocket maximum, it shows $6,000, $12,000. They do have an additional $1,000 out-of-pocket for inpatient hospital stays. So within that calendar year, uh, someone's admitted to the hospital. Now, that, that comes out of reserves and isn't passed on to the employee. There is a $500 copay for the first two hospital admissions and $250 um, for outpatient procedures, and there's four of those. But once with the plan that 6000 and 12000 is met, then it's covered at 100% other than your prescriptions. Your prescription co-pays um, are a separate part of the United Healthcare plan. So no prescriptions come out of your reserves at all. The employees have the co-pay and the balance is paid by um, United Healthcare. So that's one positive because if you ran um, a detailed report on your claims, I bet you prescriptions are probably in the top three, if not the top. <laughs> and so that is one nice thing about the United Healthcare plan is their prescription plan is separate, so no prescriptions can out of your reserves, it's just medical claims. So that's the United Healthcare plan. Then my concern when we first started this was the network which you see, you know, the memo that they're adding with the hospital coming on, any of the doctors affiliated with that. Um, and then, of course, the family practice, there's, you know, three or four doctors in there um, that they are, they do currently have a contract out. Now, it's, it's with having those claims and reserves and the savings, as the, when it's submitted to United Healthcare, it could go, until we get some of those providers in network, it would be applied towards their out-of-network deductible, but we could still treat that as an in-network claim, which that would just be more money out of reserves, but with what you're building up in reserves, that we could cover those claims um, until that we could get them credentialed in the network. So if it takes 30 days, if it takes 60 days, we have that flexibility underneath, just like you do now with the partially self-funded plan for those claims. Other option I brought, it's going to look just the same, and I should have labeled them at the top, so I apologize that I didn't. 
I'd also gotten final numbers with Coventry. The Coventry network is stronger um, in the area. Um, so I did get final numbers from Coventry. They're not as good as United Healthcare. That's right. But the network, of course, is a stronger network. And of course, I set up the front page to plan. The plan design is a little bit different than it is with United Healthcare because of the plan design that Coventry writes with the office visit co pays and the prescription co pays. The deductible and co insurance stay the same. So you would still have just 2,500 um, liability as the employer. Under their $5,000 deductible plan, Coventry does have three per family. Uh, where United Healthcare only has two. Very seldom do we see three family members meet that deductible, but we would still have the employees just two times what it currently is. They do have a $20 office visit copay, and under the plan design that Coventry has, under that $20 office visit copay, then that does not come out of reserves either. So with, under this plan with Coventry, they go to a primary care physician, they pay the $20, Coventry picks up the balance. It's just on your specialist and your urgent care that they apply it towards that $5,000 deductible. So under United Healthcare, with that office visit, okay, reserves is picking up the balance for the office visit until you need that. But their plan design is a little bit different. Their prescription drug co-pays, and I just put a $15 on generic, but they do have a $3 co-pay if it's on their preferred list. And so they can either get it for a $3 co-pay or a $15 co-pay. And the, the prescription drug coverage with Coventry, they cover the generic drugs too under the plan. Nothing comes out of reserves for generic drugs. Under your preferred and non-preferred, Brand, the employee has the co pay of a 30 and a 55, and the, that does not get paid until the $5,000 deductible is met. As an employer, we would still give that benefit to the employee, but your plan would pick up the balance of those prescriptions until that $5,000 is met, and then it would just be the co pay. The rates that um, Coventry had are on page two under part one. I have the illustrated rates at the top the same of what your maximum costs are under your partially self funded plan. And they come in at 372.10 for single, 696.34 employee and spouse, 621.49 employee and children, and 1023.19. So based on the same count, their monthly premium would be 27509 as opposed to the United Health Care. Again, these are uh, doing it late December. Again, coming in with January, the rates are about 20% higher based on health care reform. And we have taken any of our small groups and even some of our larger groups, we have taken them to into it actually December uh, as opposed to January, we will know just for the savings and the next year it'll be 20% higher. Um, <laughs> of course, you know, under health care reform, they, like you made the announcement like a couple weeks ago, the community rating for small group um, companies were all geared up. They had a community rating. They've already priced these groups out, had everything approved for the, for the Kansas Insurance Department, and then you come back and say, oh, we're going to push that off to 2015. But the carriers are already geared in, in that mode, and to try to back now is going to take them months not to go forward with the community rating. So that's already in place with the carriers. Um, so even though that he is pulled back, the ball is already in motion with these carriers. But, um, and again, I see a lot of things still continuing to be pushed off because we're not even. Close. But looking at these numbers with Coventry again, um, their network, and I did bring provider directories with them, their networks are, um, at this point right now, um, there's more providers in that network than the crap, and we wouldn't have to wait for the providers to come in. But even with the higher rates with Preferred Health or Coventry, um, to savings of approximate savings of five thousand seven hundred and seventy-two a month, or sixty-nine thousand two sixty-three a year. 
still fitting in the 11,600 and under claims reserves. So on page three, 84.15 people would have to meet that $5,000 deductible for the claims rate. You say in the Coventry is stronger, I mean, in terms of number of providers as yes. opposed to the United Healthcare? Yeah, at this point, yes. And United but as far as the companies go, I mean, it's just they have more providers in Coventry than what the United Healthcare has. Right, in this area. Yeah, I think at, the time, at mm -hmm, this time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the Ho Craft Hospital just joined the network mm -hmm. November 1st. So they're in the process of any doctors that are affiliated with the hospital are being input now. So their effective date may not be 12 1 or maybe January 1. Mm -hmm. um, but that network is growing. Uh, when we had first talked and looked at this, I knew that they were working on a contract with the Craft Hospital, but they wouldn't in it, you know, yet. But that was finalized as of November 1st. So usually, I mean, once the hospital goes, the docs always, you know, always follow. Mm -hmm. um, but you got, I think it was, you know, you get to, you know, pretty much to keep her to line them. Everybody feels like that's the end of Kansas, and it's not. <laughs> but it took us uh, almost a year to get the liver hospital in that work with United Healthcare with the negotiations back and forth. But, they are you know, network also. So, and like I said, the Wichita area is very strong um, with the network. The one thing that I had not thought about before that I know we can do for our clients is that we print um, a top provider listing. Like we can go in and, and print top 100 providers. And if that's something that you could get from BMI, then we could, then we know the top provider, I mean, the providers that your employees utilize. And within a day, we can go through and show that whether they're in network, you know, do a comparison with Coventry and with um, United Healthcare. So then up front, everybody knows, um, you know, the providers, or if you want to look at reserves on any of out of network providers until we can get them credentialed. And um, of course, you know, it's always up to the provider whether they have to accept the contracts and the negotiated rates. But, Said with them being the top payer for can care, um, it's definitely growing. So those are the three options I have today. Being that you know, partially self-funded, um, married and looking at your benefits, doing either the United Healthcare or the Freebird Health Coventry um, would um, change the employees' benefits a little bit. It's giving them an office visit copay, a prescription copay. Is increasing their phone insurance a little bit out of pocket, um, and then utilizing the free mutuals. Is it true that the Affordable Care Act kind of leaves self-funded plans alone? There are there are still some fees, um, and there's a lot of there are some things with the partially self-funded that uh, you do not have to comply with. Is still governed by ERISA, um, but there are some fees that are not associated with the partially self-funded. The fees um, that what we call the pack of fees um, are included in these rates, so the carrier takes care of that for you. Under the partially self-funded, um, you still have that 6350 annually that you have to pay uh, per person. Um, I don't know if that's included in your rates now, and they take care of paying that for you if they just let you know and then your accountant takes care of paying those. I'm not sure how you have that set up to do, um, but we would handle that for you too if it was partially self-funded. So there are some advantages on staying partially self-funded as opposed to going fully insured, mm -hmm. uh, but the fees um, that are out there now are all included in these rates. And you pay, when you pay the monthly premium, and that goes for the carrier. I know sitting on that side of the table and looking at all the health care reform and, and I mean, I'm just, to change it. <laughs> and, and there's a, a lot of employers that feel that way that, you know, it's just like, you know, maybe we should just write this out and, and see what we're going to do. Um, but looking, you know, at your savings on what you've got yeah, here yeah. Um, can do. And, and even if you decide to stay partially self-funded, we would love to be able to take your account and manage your dollars and 
semi write the policies um, coming in and looking at the benefits. Um, the ID cards that's in the, the packet, then the employee would only have one card. Um, we would access the same network, so there would be no change in, in network providers. Um, and the transition for the employees would be, you know, really smooth by staying partially self-funded and not changing carriers, like you said, with the network. Um, and the rates that I presented there, um, we have, uh, if we get, you know, the claims at the end of November or have a disclosure sign, then, you know, the numbers could be better than what I presented there or pretty close to the same. Um, but we would love the opportunity to, to be able to go to work for Stafford County. I like to bring too many things to the table, but I'm, I wanted you to see, and I'm, I'm a very hands-on, I'm a numbers person, uh, want to look at all, you know, areas on um, where we can still, you know, keep the benefit there for the employee to get, have that same injury as the employer. Very active. Um, your your self-funding plan is very similar to what we have now, though, in the world, it is. Uh, we have the same contract, the 30000 specific, um, on a 12-15 contract, so we're in 12 and paying 15. Um, so I'm not knowing the you know, total percentage of what the increase was on your plan. You know, the plan we presented here um, was what, about $173? No, actually, $73 more, approximately, um, a month based on your current and not your normal. And these numbers, you know, too, that you might be able to improve on based on the current blanks. So, and, and the groups that we do have partially self-ended um, the monthly reporting that you currently get now, the aggregate reports, that often to go through the reports, um, the detailed reports, what's medical, what's prescription, um, writing the reports to see where your utilization is to where then we can tweak the plan going into the second year. Um, the county that we just renewed, of course, we're on the Freedom Choice Plan, but processing those underlying claims, we could see, you know, how many emergency room visits, how many doctor's office visits, chiropractic visits, um, that we could come in and tweak their plan a little bit to have some, some more savings. The, the quote with uh, Coventry, the other positive on that is as long as you use an in-network provider, lab is covered by Coventry at 100%. So there's no lab work that comes out of the resource of it. Okay, any other questions? Again, both the Coventry and United Healthcare would be a late December um, effective date. How soon can you get down? We've implemented a plan in two days before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we produce the ID cards, the employee packets, um, everything, you know, in our office. So, um, and I mean, if it be United Healthcare is something that you're still looking for, Towards with that kind of savings, if we could get a top provider report, I could, you know, tell you within. I'd be curious to see that. That's a lot of money. On the providers um, doing the comparison, and even with the Coventry network, that the the numbers with United Healthcare are final numbers based on the health statements that we did. So I was very pleased with what they came back as. I'd be curious to see how. So everyone in the Pratt Hospital network has signed a contract with the exception of Pratt Family Practice and they haven't submitted it back yet, is that? That's my so understanding, but they have a contract that it's not been it's finalized. Not mm -hmm. And by looking at that top provider report too, you can see, you know, a lot of people go to the Pratt area, how many people go through it then. Um, the Wichita area, I would bring in all your specialists. 
um, that yeah, community they yeah, have that report the there. What's your report? It's a top provider report, the top 100 providers um, that are utilized under the plan. I know it's not, a, it's not a standard report that you would probably get. It's not on the system. Though. Probably not. Is it? I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so, but I mean, for the system is any kind of a, on the, I should probably get it. Could come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, a, it was several pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was broken down by procedures. I can get that. Prescription. Providers. And you asked it about yes, that. Yes. But if I could, you know, just get the top providers, top yeah. 100, I mean, that would cover your primary care physicians in the hospital. Probably the longest. And like I said, within 24 hours, I can have that comparison back to you. Um, showing you okay. kind of what's in your current network, what's in the Coventry network. And I'd, be curious, the I'd be curious to see how it falls out. But I mean, that, that plan, so that's, that's, that's a lot of savings. And then if I could get your aggregate report through um, November, then I can find out where your actual costs are and what you're running uh, for single employees, spouse, including children and family to do, you know, the mm -hmm. comparison, knowing that this is your maximum liability here. So where does your actual cost compare um, in the claims that you paid up to that 30000 I'm going to impress you. My head is spinning. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know. That's why I hated to bring too much, but it's like, oh my gosh. I, I sat there last night and said, okay, I know we need to take one option. And then it's like, oh no. <laughs> I've, been done, I've been in this business too long where you take in what you think. And, um, and so I just, I knew with the timing, I wanted to bring everything to the table that I've been together so far. With the numbers. Okay.
been through the state and everything. He, he could, so, you know, he's a real good one and I'm guessing they got started with this. He's a hero and he ain't like that. No, yeah, it's surprising how uh, cool he knows him. Because mm -hmm. he knew a friend of mine who lives in Henderson, Nebraska, oh, and in Henderson, uh, Nevada. Nevada. Clark has fun. Yes, that's great. Okay, now what do we have to do? K dot agreement. Well, this is the inspection agreement. It should have been. They should have. The state screwed up. They should have sent this. Yes. I'll do that. Oh uh, yeah, because all this is part of yesterday to get this in the work. Oh. So and they just drove this down from elsewhere. Oh, wow. This morning? Yeah. That's why you want it on late. We, today. we were, yeah. You can't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that. I can't remember that. Okay. Yes, okay. So, so this is one agreement. That is one agreement. There are four, four copies. copies. One goes back to this day. One goes to Kirk. Right. One goes to One's ours. And two goes back to Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do they need a motion to sign this? Or this has um, already been agreed to? It's just part it's of that just project. Part of that signing project yes. you've already approved to do. So, so just start signing. Sign and well, <laughs> don't you think, Philip? Or, I mean, the, the project can't proceed without it. Obviously. No, it's it's an inspection agreement. And say so we've got a meeting set up for next. Is that what you're going to do? The tank ships and stuff too. This is part of that. No, this is not part of that. Oh. That's and we and me and John talked about that a little bit yesterday. We probably, and the more we talked about it, we'd probably be better off doing it in a, in a section or a bridge, you know, like instead of them trying to do them all at once, do, you know, a third of them, try a third of them one year, a third of them the Because they're going to have to come down and do some, do some engineering, just, just, well, I drove out here and said, no, township this morning. There was, there was at least four yeah, yeah. sections. But but they're they're gonna already. Down. Well, well, motion to to have have well, I think we already have. Well, well you approved the project. Yes. <laughs> so it doesn't require <laughs> that, 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 that's, Let me tell you what, that's not the only time she has had it. Well, I guess, I guess to be you want the motion? on the safe side. Let's, I make a motion and I'll play the sign on that. Well, special. all three of us. We all three have to sign. Oh, she has to sign it. You guys have to sign it. Oh, I have all to four sign. of us. Five so of us. So make a motion that we all sign it. That we go into the agreement with the Federal Aid Construction Engineering Inspection Services. You just moved to approve the agreement. I moved to approve it. <laughs> it's been moved a second that we uh, approve the agreement. As please state it. All in favor Can say aye. Can state that? As per no. agreement. <laughs> aye. 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 All opposed say aye. She carry. Okay. Yeah. Now we can start. But I did talk to Ron with him. He said, you know, I asked him if he'd be interested. And he says, yeah. That way, everything is brought up. The only thing is, I may have to chip in a little bit for engineering costs. Because I don't know what it wants to do. So, I don't know. There's no more on it. I don't know what it would run. You know, typically when they come up with one, That's going to be kind of nature, though. Yeah, that's going to entail a lot more. Two. Do you need one? No. Do you need it? No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> You're going to have to play. I can't. My life is <laughs> I have a chance. <laughs> Sure, well, I'll tell you, I have a motorized wheelchair down here. What do you mean to me? I'm injured in this knee. What did they tell you? Hepatitis. Hepatitis? See, if I have been paying you all, I just laugh at it. No, hepatitis hurts. I have hepatitis. Did you have to use a cane? It's the inflammation of the bursa. Just on my head. I just sign that, or you can not afford it. Stafford County Clerk. I told you need my seal, too.
can't walk in here. <laughs> <laughs> Have they started construction on that cell tower? Not that I'm aware of. Where's the exact location? Mile and a half west of I can do this corner, back on the south side. I'd love to. I don't know. They have I don't know. Right. Yeah, they have some I'm talking on the cell phone and no, I can judge. Yeah. 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 That would be good. Oh, is that the that's same one? one? No, this is just right outside of Hudson. Isn't it? Oh, that's a one generator. Isn't it BTI? Yeah. Yeah. So they haven't started that. Going on there either. It doesn't take long for a good September. Well, uh, my only thought was if they're going to pour a concrete base, wintertime's not a good time unless they put a lot of gas on it. They just put calcium in cover the blankets. Crowns still on that. If you talk to anybody about the Kansas Co op, the intersection. No, John, when John, John's going to be down one of these days, I'm going to do some of the inspections, so we'll have him look at that. Because he'll tell, I don't know how often he'll come down. Because I'll come down, I don't know if he'll, how often he'll come down and inspect the work that we That's what this is for. When you have him look at that, I wonder if we could go a little bit wider. You know how the trucks turn out? Mm -hmm. If we actually, when they poured that concrete, if we go a little wider, that might help. Of that mess. Oh, you can take the existing, exist, take the existing curve out and modify that. So, 
Yeah, because I mean, as long as they're going to keep turning across that and they turn it and they go off the edge of it, they'll never hold it. Well, concrete would be, uh, yeah. it, it still makes an awful tight. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't like it. They just got to tear it up. Really? Just I'll say, tires. Well, yeah. And that concrete's going to be 20 yeah. times worse. Yeah, it would be. But the old field cycle looks like when it comes down. I got to think about that field cycle. Yeah, if they can pour that concrete wider, make the road wider. I don't think there's any reason they couldn't get turned if they just were. Because the longer I talk to him about it, we thought, well, maybe this would qualify for high school rules because you can't, you know, can't Well, that's what I kept thinking. That, you know, the state's going to be involved in a few feet. Yeah, if we tie it there to where we're at. Part of it's hard. I'm, I'm just glad that Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I think we need to do a good job. Let them get, get, get an idea of what it's going to cost. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. I would hope that we, because it's, it's, it's just a 180 foot from the highway back to that bridge. Would be where I'm not sure we have. Not where that utility pole is at, I think would be far enough. To, I mean, you might as well, maybe, well, might as well go to the bridge. Yes, so. because that, that, that yeah. just ties all, all right. the concrete in there. Right. That takes that takes some of this away from Because I don't want to, I don't want a little bit of maintenance on here on the north side. No. Yeah. 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 At the same time, Bruce says, no. let's make sure that what we're doing, that's what we're going to be turning. Or, you know, yeah. It's not going further than that. It wouldn't really make sense to do it. It's only 10, 10 feet from the bridge to the He don't want to pay for it and clear my half mile south stuff. <laughs> 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 Usually when we're going to do that, we set the poles by that. Uh, we're just going to, we should be done for driving the pilot today. We'll pull the scene up tomorrow, set the cap. We should be out of the by Friday, hopefully. Because I'll have cold. Very cold. Yeah. That's that one on west. Yeah. West is just straight, straight west of the west of the wire, right off of the right. road. But the deck was... We fixed the east end, the, the west end, but the our metal cord gave metal decking on it. Well, on the west end, then it started breaking through, mm -hmm. through the two and four. So we went back down there and closed it, and then it closed for a couple of weeks while we were finishing up some other stuff. And we went down Monday and started on it. Got into it. <laughs> got, got into things you can't see until you pull the top off. Right. So we'll set it up when we're driving the metal pilot and we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So if we have to go in there, we'll have that part of that button. So I'll be able to just have to drive the metal pilot and set it up for the first time. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we'll set it up for a 28 foot bridge. So we tried to ride with the pilot in years and years ago, and I think we should have worked out that area. Yeah. So we'll have a little bit of help from the install. Come on, Chris, we'll do it probably. So we'll have a bit. Get your salt, sand mix, get ready to go. Yeah, we briefed it and they stayed up at the end of last year.
But that was on the last season, I guess I should say. Sometime in March, I think it was on the last season. It would be nice to put a building mark on the boots that have just some sure. salt there on hand, but the way it is, it's not feasible to do that right now. And on top of that, Dale Phillips, and he's got one of his deals like the state's got there. I think long and hard about doing it. Yeah. I think it's kind of a thing that's not hmm. I sure don't want it outside of it because there's an issue of trying to contain this stuff. So we'll, well, for now, we'll just keep doing what we've been doing. Because we don't, we don't treat everything we can't afford to treat everything. We treat stop signs and intersections and bridges and the shelter there for some reason. out there. Well, that's about all I got. Okay. That was painless. Yeah, we must spend the money. We don't have to spend it. You told me that one, so unfortunately I do know that. <laughs> we've, we've been trying not to spend money. We're hoping not to hurry. Oil is cheap. Well, I hope it's not going to go up next year. Yeah. Yeah, but that price, that crude price and that price to not take that. Really? It just depends on how much refineries are, are cooking out and um, cooking it down and, and how, how big the asphalt, the supply of asphalt base is. There's a lot of it. If they start, if they fire at cokers, and, which they probably not now, I mean, it's, it just depends on what they're trying to get out of it. No, last year I mean, it was a pleasant, I mean, this year was a pleasant surprise, it was Dan. Mm -hmm. And I talked to him and he says, well, I would think it'd be, you know, they always figure 10%, which would be 20 cents, but hopefully it's better than that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just, it'll just be less of a year. Unfortunately, I don't want to see no less, and so it, it becomes a matter of making less mix. And sometimes you end up a little rough and right. If we start going back on our ceiling, it's, Something else has got to give. Mm -hmm. And we have a very dry post of our own, so very few of them have to be successful. The perfect world would all be smooth. Yeah, it would all be 12 inches. 12, 12 inch asphalt, nobody would have any problems, would they? Somebody would call it something over 15. Somebody would. Or I turn or something like that. Yeah. Okay. You're quiet. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I'll shut up and get out of here. You're fine. You better be glad she don't. She might beat you with it. <laughs> That's why I said that. <laughs> well, We've got to keep our distance. Right, so. Have a good Ooh. day. Do we have anything else? No, we are done. This is complete. <laughs> they're used up all the ink we can possibly use today. Anything, Jane? Nope. There we go. Okay, we're adjourned.